Hello everyone, I'm Jane Hansen. This week in the arena, Catholic communicators are heeding the call by Pope Benedict XVI to use new media in ways that touch people's hearts and draw them to living faith communities. The Holy Father gave this in a January speech last year to attendees gathered for a media convention in New Orleans. The Holy Father focused on the theme, spreading the good news bite by bite, and highlighted the extraordinary potential of new media to bring the message of Christ and the teaching of his church to the attention of a wider public audience. What is this new media that the Pope spoke about? And how can we use it to spread the gospel and the message of the church? Joining us now, Monsignor Kieran Harrington, the Director of Communications for the Diocese of Brooklyn, and our regular contributors, Elizabeth Scalia, Managing Editor of the Catholic Portal at Pathios.com, and Grant Galicho, Associate Editor of Commonweal Magazine. And then via Skype, our very special guest from South Bend, Indiana, Patrick Linen, co-founder and developer of Little I iApps LLC and co-creator of the Confession app which is now available on iTunes. So welcome to all of you and let's talk about this Confession app which sounds a gr like a great way to go to confession, Patrick. <laughs> Thanks. So tell me about the reaction to this and how you created it. Um, the reaction's been really tremendous. It's it's kind of gone viral, which is much more than I think any of us really anticipated who made it. Um, the actual app is called Confession, a Roman Catholic app, and it was made by uh, myself, my brother Chip, and a good friend of ours, uh, Ryan, and we just built it on our evenings and weekends. Um, you have yeah. actually gotten this endorsed by the bishop in Indiana. What have you, have you heard from the Vatican on the, on the whole subject? Well, what we have is called an imprimatur, and it's not so much an endorsement as it is he's basically read over the text, and there's nothing morally or doctrinally wrong with the actual text. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we've heard the Vatican actually had to release a press release based on our app because of some of the confusing news stories that are going around about it. So it, not not typical that the Vatican reacts to something I do around my house. So. Yeah, really, that's for sure. <laughs> Monsignor Harrington has indeed tried this confession app. How's it work? It's it's actually uh, I, I was actually very very impressed by it. I mean, it's a it's a real good examination of conscience, and I think that you're in the top 25 of uh, Apple iPhone apps. I, and I think that there that's got to be a lot of folks who are not uh, who haven't been to confession in a while. It gives them a good opportunity to kind of examine their conscience and and make a good confession to to find the way to go to confession. It's specific to your state in life. So a priest is going to have different questions than a married man and different from a married woman versus a single woman. But wait, here's 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 what I want to know. Does does everybody get the have you been angry with God question? <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, it, it, you, you do, but you might get it in different forms, essentially. Uh -huh. so. You're very angry with that. <laughs> <laughs> a bit but Patrick, I guess before you know anybody takes this too far, you need no. to know that that this confession does not have absolution along with it. Yeah, no, this was strictly designed as an aid. And and honestly, if you try to use it any other way, it really doesn't make any sense. When you actually go through the actual confession, the only words that are included are the words of the penitent. So the actual the actual person participating in the actual confession, there's no sort of words on what the priest would say because that's from the rite of penance and that's copyrighted and, you know. Oh, I didn't so, know yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Thankfully, we didn't include any of that in the program. <laughs> so, so Elizabeth has got this working now, so just read us a couple of the questions. Okay, after you put in your personal information, it, it creates a, a, uh, custom, a custom design examination of conscience for you, and it goes through the Ten Commandments. And, for example, on the third, do you remember to keep the Lord's Day holy? Do I needlessly work on Sunday? Um, have I deliberately missed Mass on Sunday? You go to the Fifth Commandment, I shall not kill. Have I had an abortion or encouraged anyone to have an abortion? You know, I think most people doing a quick examination of conscience would say, oh, Fifth Commandment, I haven't killed anybody. And they might not even consider, you know, helping to procure an abortion or discussing an abortion with someone in a supportive manner. And all of that gets kind of looked at in this. So I think it's a much more thorough examination of conscience than you get from those little cards at the back of the church where they kind of go through the Ten Commandments. Um, and I think uh, it's very thoughtful and, and more thorough, I think, than many people had so, imagined. So in your, in your best of all worlds, you would see, Monsignor, that people would use this as a tool 
before they go to confession. Yeah, well, that's what I think is great about it, right, is, is I think that folks can download this, and maybe they download it because they're sort of curious, but then as they go through the questions, uh, I think it really does provoke a lot of uh, internal searching uh, and and hopefully leads a person to a great sense of remorse and sense of guilt where they where they need to hear the words of forgiveness that it's not just enough that I've touched on the screen what I've done wrong but that I recognize that I, I'm really in need of hearing the words of Christ offers forgiveness to you and to me. And the but, app is very helpful too because it even tells you how long it's been since your last confession. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, really? no, you, you actually you have to put it in. You, you do. You have to put it in. So you have to put it in. Oh, so you like, and and, no, and no, you're scrolling no. through the months and the years <laughs> and you're thinking, it is time. It's time. It's time. <laughs> Patrick, what were you saying? I heard you. Uh, oh, you know, it's, one of the things is that when you go to confession, after you finish the confession, it sort of wipes out the sins, but then it timestamps, <clears throat> excuse me, it timestamps and remembers when your last confession is so you can't really lie to the program so to speak oh. and it'll just, let you know how long it's been but but those but our sins are not being uploaded to your central server or anything. no no, no. <laughs> and it also yeah, gives you yeah, a yeah, handy we talked about that we're like you think facebook has a lot of dirt on people imagine what we could get with this application but Whoa. yeah no, it's, this also it's gives all you a internal handy. on the actual device it's all password protected and as soon as you finish the confession it wipes out everything essentially so just like confession itself just like confession uh, itself exactly so, uh, I'm one, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, it gives you a little, um, if you don't know your prayers, it gives you several options on the act of contrition. Um, my nephew calls the act of nutrition. And <laughs> then it gives you the traditional prayers, so the Apostles' Creed, the Hail Holy Queen. So if Father says, say a memorero, you go, I don't know what that is. It's there. You so. know, I'm curious, is this as popular outside the United States as it has been inside the United States? Uh, yes. Uh, very popular in Australia and uh, the UK. Uh, we've got foreign language versions coming in the next month or so, where there's going to be uh, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. So we should see an increase in foreign sales at that point. And then... Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's done pretty well internationally. In fact, honestly, it, it it when we did the press, we did blogs within the United States, picked it up first, and then Zenit picked it up, and then it did really well internationally. Uh, and then once Reuters picked up the story, then it became really big in the U.S. So. You know, Patrick, one of my questions um, to you is, the what have you heard from people who are actually using this that may be either lapsed Catholics or don't consider that they really need to go to confession anymore? We've got a really interesting mix of people getting a hold of us. A lot of Catholic priests get a hold of us and say that they've been seeing it in the confessional and that they like it, but also that they use it themselves. That's a lot of emails we get, which we think is really neat. Um, people who haven't been in confession in 20, 30 plus years going into the confessional. It's sort of, the funny thing about these phones is they're not really like phones anymore, you know? They're more like personal devices. like. My phone has my family pictures, my social networking, my email. And so people feel comfortable with these devices. And so we've heard a lot of just individuals saying, you know, I'm a good Catholic. I do go to confession. I forget my act of contrition. It's nice to have with me. But we also hear from those people who have been away for a really long time. We're like, okay, this is really neat. And I'm glad it's there for me in case I need it. Patrick, what, what, what prompted you to, to come up with this app? What, what made you think about a confession app? Uh, well, you know, there was an examination of conscience uh, at a parish that uh, myself and the other guys belonged to that had sort of like these uh, settings for kids and one for adults. And we, we talked to the parish priest and we said, well, what could we do with all of these different versions with one of these devices? You know, because the funny thing is, is Confession is confession. It's been around forever. It's totally free. An examination of conscience, like you mentioned, they're everywhere. But, you know, when we started to think about what Pope Benedict called for, he called for new media, the service of the word, word with a capital W. We sort of sat around and go, okay, well, what exactly does that mean? And what we finally came to the conclusion was, was that, you know, it's not going to be enough to just take what we have and put it on these devices. We have to do something that is rich with tradition, with that embraces our Catholic tradition, but melds it with the unique nature of these devices. And so that's sort of what we came up with, was a sort of personalized assistant to confession, essentially. Ah, that's a good way of looking at it. What else are you working on that has to do with religion? Well, I mean, other than we're all active in our parish, uh, we've got ideas for a couple of other apps, mm -hmm. but 
not really telling anybody until we're <laughs> I, I don't blame you for that, Patrick. But uh, this version, we're going to, this, this program, we are going to be releasing um, the ability to push notify uh, in case you want to set your calendar to go to confession. It'll send you a reminder. Um, and we're also adding the ability to add the number of times you commit a sin into the app as well. Ooh, so. So that maybe was the that biggest will criticism say, yeah. that I read was that it didn't ask this. Now, are you also going to have any sort of um, um, helpful aid in where to find confession, you know, um, a directory of, of places offering free yeah, confession? Yeah, we're working with a couple in people hours, have that guys. information. It, it's not in there now, and that might be in the future. That one's probably a little bit farther down the line than the other ones. But, I mean, there's certain things that we, we want to get it done immediately. We're also working on converting it to Android phones, and wow. that's, yeah, it's been a little bit nice. Very, very creative, wouldn't we all agree? So, thank Patrick, you. thank you so much. We are going to take yeah. a break. We really appreciate you joining us today. We'll look forward to what the next uh, what the next app you come up with is. And we're going to be back in a moment. We want to remind you that you can weigh in in our discussion anytime by going to our website at netny.net backslash in the arena. Click on the enter the arena. We always welcome your questions and your comments. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, as we continue our discussion on religion and the new media. So this confession app, I mean, I find this fascinating because you can see it, that people really want to use it. Mm -hmm. And I do think it may bring people back into the church. It may be doing exactly what the Pope wanted. I think that, you know what, the big thing for folks today is our lives are so busy. Mm -hmm. And one thing that all these applications do is they make things very convenient. And so it can help connect us in a way around our own schedules, at our own pace, our own time. And I think that's a real benefit. Well, I think it also shows you that people tend to think of the church as an antiquated, behind the times thing. And yet here we are integrating, you know, very naturally into the very latest technology. And I think that helps show that the church is living and vibrant. And you know, maybe it's about time for that perception to come into view. How do you think young people are responding to this thing? I mean, uh, my, my, my own concern is uh, uh, that I'm, I'm still somewhat young, uh, is, that, <laughs> is that people who, people, younger people won't understand that it's not a substitute, that because they're so, they're so used to using digital media as, as a kind of real interface, would that, like, could, how can you say, well, what, you, what you've got in your hand there isn't the real thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an aid. When this came out, my first concern was, um, are you going to have people, and I think it's a, it's a natural concern, will you have people go through the, the things, click it all together and say, okay, I'm done and I don't have to go to confession. I called up my son and his roommate. And I said, what do you think about this? And my son said, I don't like it because I think that's exactly what people will do. And his roommate surprised me and said, well, if it's not approved by the church, I don't want to know about it, which is really strange because he doesn't go to church. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but then I noticed on NPR, uh, they did a, a feature on it, and they had a 22-year-old production assistant um, who ran through it, and she found the questions very intrusive. And the whole thing was sort of an oh-my-God moment for her. Um, which might be good or bad, but then when she got all done, um, they said to her, so now is this going to make you want to go to confession? And she said, no, I've just done it. I'm done. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I've got to tell you something. I don't think that's going to be, I think that that might be the initial feeling, but I think there is something when you kind of confront the horror of your own sins. And, and in fact, it's actually a benefit that's intrusive, that it helps kind of put this place, put you in a frame to say, you know what, there's something, I need something more. And you know what we all need? Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of what I would say to people, Skype doesn't replace the interaction, the real interaction we have with well, someone. Well, it doesn't, it but leads unfortunately for people of a certain generation, there, there have been a number of stories that have been written about how people who are in their teens or 20s now, that they are losing some of their ability to communicate in person. My feeling is that if you actually look at that and think, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't gone through that commandment. I haven't thought about that this might be a sin. I mean, for me, to at least examine your conscience that way is better than doing nothing. I agree with you. And, and when I did it, and I, I think I've been to confession within the last two months, but when I went through it, I kind of thought, yeah, it's time. And another woman on NPR who I, was, I think, in her 40s went through it and said, yeah, I need to get back to confession. And I think you're right, Karen. I think that, that even if it doesn't make an immediate impact, it will get people to confront themselves in ways that they're not right now. Let's talk about some of the other apps that are out there. That there's one that's about with the missile. 
Have you guys used that? I don't. I have. I and? Have. Yeah, I, I can tell you I, I like it. Sometimes there are glitches. Um, so, you know, I, when I was on vacation, I brought my ibreviary uh, because I figured that I would be able to say my office and at the same time say mass. And uh, one morning I got up to say mass and uh, the readings didn't come through and I was kind of in a panic. Fortunately, the other priest had a, a book, so we were able to, to celebrate yeah, the mass. What What's the book? book you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> so you just said I breviary, which is um, the Psalms and the Psalms. Uh, you know, each the priests are required to pray throughout mm -hmm. the day, and uh, the book that they pray is called a breviary of the Holy Office, Liturgy of the Hours, and uh, it's online. It's a great, great thing, and, and and the reason why it's great is because these are big, awkward, cumbersome books, and so that you can have it on your iPad makes it very convenient. But you need to have your charger with you. Well, that's right. There you are. <laughs> um, what about, there's, there's, all kind, there's books of common prayer. There's from the compendium of the catechism. Mm -hmm. That's also another, uh, another, something else that you can get in an application. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it really is amazing how much data is being uploaded on online now. I, I was thinking, when I got my daily missile when I made my first communion, uh, it, it was a little book, very yeah. cute. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't much larger than my iPhone. Right. So I'm, I'm, it just got me thinking, is that is our Catholic kids going to get you know, an, an app now instead of... Oh, I doubt it. This is really good. This is um, divineoffice.org. And this is for people who want to pray the breviary, but it also has an audio. So you, are, you can have the sense of praying in community. Oh, with uh, okay. with other people and can, um, can you join? Is there like a chat where people can? No, get it's not interactive that? in that respect. But but you can read along and and pray along with do, them. Do they advertise on Patheos? <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> well, of course, they I will mean, now. <laughs> which does which does lead us to the subject that that that's what you do. You have a, a Patheos is um, it's a Catholic portal and. And that's what you do for a living, really, is using yeah. the new media to, to to help with your faith, but also to help others. You know, it's it's really great. Patheos, of course, is, is ecumenical. It, it goes after and, and looks at, at all faiths. But in the Catholic portal, we're having a lot of fun because we're really opening it up to um, not just traditionalist Catholics or kind of middling Catholics. You know, we have a couple of Catholics who admit they're struggling, and they're writing as columnists, too. And I think that gives all Catholics an opportunity to say, you know, I'm not the freak in the pew. You know, however I'm feeling, there's somebody else feeling the same thing. And we also have blogs and um, podcasts. And I think podcasts are really excellent um, because they, they give you an opportunity to really hear somebody else's witness or pray with other people. And, and all of this alternative media is opening up and exciting people in the faith um, in ways that it really, you know, has gotten kind of stagnant. How are Catholics doing relative to other religious faiths? On, on Patheos? On Patheos, yeah. Oh, well, it's, you know, the, the, the evangelicals and, and the Catholics are duking it out, and the pagans are taking up the real. <laughs> <laughs> Taking up the rear, is what I said. <laughs> but Grant, as, a, as somebody who's also involved in the media, I mean, what? How do you see this use of the of of these new forms of the media for Catholicism and other religions? Well, you know, obviously, I work in a magazine, so I look at it from a journalist point point of view, and uh, I mean, it's kind of amazing to me how Twitter has become a real information tool, uh, and and so you know, you can. You can plug anything into your Twitter feed. You can find out what's going on in the Middle East. You can find out what the Pope said. Or can, what people think about what you're writing and saying. True. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I think, you know, obviously this is, this is the very early stage of this way of giving information. Uh, but for the magazine that I work for, it, uh, we've seen our traffic just explode because, we, because people are just totally plugged in. Mm -hmm. So I mean, what's that going to do to the magazine? I mean, because the question is, is if you get the magazine, you know, it, you have to wait. <laughs> if, True. But you go online, you get it instantaneously. Is Do you think that the magazine kind of goes away and people just get all this content online? We, we haven't seen that in our own numbers. I mean, the thing is that you've got a kind, you've got two markets. You've got the, the younger market that reads almost everything on, on the web, and then you have the more the older mature market. audience who who wants paper. You know, they they want something they they can stick Does in their pocket. Does Common Wheel have younger readers? We do. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Magazines actually take the gloves serve. off. They, the, people don't always want to sit at their computer and, and right. read a, a three thousand word article. So a magazine really serves for the longer features right. and mm -hmm. and that. 
I'm just, I'm just curious though. Uh, we saw, for example, in the Middle East with the, with Egypt and uh, the Mubarak resignation. We saw how what a huge role the social media played in that. I'm curious about what, if there are drawbacks that might uh, lead to something happening in Catholicism. What? No, I, I think that uh, I actually think that uh, social communications, new media, is is really a benefit for the church. I think that the challenge for the church is, you know, the church thinks in centuries, and all of a sudden information is available immediately. In and I think that's, seconds. Yeah, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the church because the church, and, and we've seen this historically, uh, I mean, more recently in terms of how the church deals with crises, right? It's difficult for us to respond. That's one thing. The other problem is, is that the church is not mo a monolith, right? So it's not like the Pope has a thought in Rome and that is immediately communicated and executed on the parish level. And so as a result, trying to figure out how to respond to the movements in media are, are going to place real challenges on the church. And the Vatican is not accustomed to moving quickly on anything and this is something that demands very fast lightning but responses. It's the world today. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, and you can't deny that. So it's t it's probably time for them to grasp that. I think we're probably running out of time, but I actually do think that um, one of the, the dangers of all of this is the, is, is the danger that's endemic to the whole social media experiment, which is that people tend to find that they are, uh, they find their little niche in their little echo chamber and they find 80 people who agree with them and they think, ah, that's a movement. And they begin to think that the 80 people is 80,000 people. And it can really, um, if you're not careful, it can really distort. Group that's true and that's exactly yes. the point. Well, we're going to take a break. Keep these thoughts because we will be right back in just a moment. Uh, do stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. Continuing our conversation on religion and new media, we are joined once again by Monsignor Kieran Harrington, the Director of Communications for the Diocese of Brooklyn, and our regular contributors, Elizabeth Scalia, Managing Editor of the Catholic Portal at Pathios.com, and Grant Galicho, Associate Editor of Commonweal Magazine. So we've been talking about this kind of effect that goes on with the new media, with Facebook, uh, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, and some concerns that perhaps that might be too fast moving for something as old and traditional as the Catholic Church. Grant, what, what do you think? Uh, well, I mean, I think we've seen, you know, the Vatican has sped up a little bit. You know, there are, there are bishops now who have blogs. There are priests who tweet. There are, the, the Bishop's Conference has a pretty good Twitter feed. Um, so I'm not, I mean, I think, I think the church and the Pope knows this is how people talk now. This is how they, this is how, this is how people get their information. My concern, and I think it's the, it's the Pope's too, and, and he's right to point this out, is, is what is the quality of that conversation? You know, are we, are we having a, a, a genuine human moment when we tweet at each other? Uh, are we, are we thinking, when I write this, what's my tone? Is, is this something I would say to somebody in person, or do I feel safe you know, sort of like when you're driving and you don't but think I, anybody I, can hear you, you curse at them when they cut you off. These are the concerns, though, across the board. It's not, just, <laughs> it's not just with the Vatican. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, teachers feel the same way. Parents feel the same way. I mean, it's, it's across the board when you're dealing with the social media. So you can't stop it. You cannot stop the momentum, and you kind of got to join the, you, you got to get on the boat or else you're going to be left behind a dock. You know, it's a funny thing is uh, when I was in school, uh, the first time around there was no internet. Second time around, uh, everybody was connected, and every, all the kids had, all the kids, all, all of us, and we were adults actually, all had laptops open, and who was searching ESPN, and who was, I mean, it was so funny. The teachers up there, we're all spending, spending a lot of money to go to school, and everybody's surfing the web doing other things while the professor is speaking. So is, is this a positive development? I don't know if it's necessarily a positive development. My guess, my guess is, is that it's an inevitable uh, circumstance, and at least for the period that we're in now, it's going to kind of be playing itself out in, in, in different ways. I think the Pope deserves some credit for picking up on this, too. I think a lot of people, when he was elected, said, oh, this is, you know, stagnation in, in incarnate, in incarnate. Sure. and uh, you know, he's mm -hmm. 83 years old and he's picked it up and said, yeah, do this, get my bishops doing it, get my priests doing it, get my nuns doing it. 
Um, and get, I give him a lot of credit for that. And when uh, in his book, in the last book, um, Light of the World, he, he really goes into discussing about uh, the tone and, and what's behind the conversation. He just was really on top of it. He, he displayed that this is more than just uh, you know, lip service. He, he's really understanding what this is. In a certain respect, it seems to me that he might be e facing even more than previous popes have been because of this issue and the way we communicate and, and the speed of which he's got to make decisions now versus previous times. Listen, Jane, you know there is a 24-hour news cycle. There is, we are bombarded with information. I mean, people like Elizabeth and Grant are making their living by getting information out. Into, and there is an enormous appetite for information. So you could basically spend your day surfing blogs. Yeah, the problem is that there's an enormous appetite. There is not always enormous retention. And so you can have something yeah. really wonderful that comes up, and if it doesn't get seen and dispersed immediately, it disappears and it's gone. And well, you could just do it again, though. I mean, if it's really got value to and, and interest and it's not and it's not too dated? You can. You can. Uh, you know, you can keep putting it in front of eyes, but the thing is, it's a constant reaching out then. It, it's uh, Grant, some final thoughts on this whole issue? Well, I think that's where the church comes in. The church says there should be a spiritual dimension, and you should pay attention to what you're reading, to what you're saying, to what you're doing. And, and that's, some, that's something that this technology resists, but this is what the church can offer. Elizabeth, final thoughts? You know what's really interesting is the uh, number of increases in vocations because religious orders are getting online and they're starting blogs and people are saying, wow, that's an attractive alternative. I didn't even think they lived like that. I might want to try that. So that's been a boon. Yeah, I just think that there is a real, t I, I, for me the pitfall is, is that uh, it can really distract from sort of reflection, uh, deeper reflection, and I think that we've got to be aware of that. So while there are a lot of good things and a lot of valuable, per, uh, valuable things that we can find online, I think we also have to find that time for qu internal quietude. Which the app for confession actually encourages. <laughs> so yes. well, there you go. Full circle. <laughs> thank you for connecting all the dots for us, uh, Elizabeth. That's what I do. Appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you all so much for watching us. Remember that you do not need a TV to watch the net. We are always online at netny.net. For all of us here, I'm Jane Hansen. We'll see you next time in the arena.